Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go into the very basics of CSS Grid. So I've already got a blank page set up here. As you can see, there's nothing in my HTML. In fact, the associated CSS file is completely blank. In fact, while I'm here, let's go ahead and put in, um, uh, let's see, margin zero, padding zero, border zero, and box size and border box. Let's take care of that A little generic CSS reset rule. And I will go ahead and do this too. I'll take my HTML and my body. I'm going to set those to min height, 100 viewport heights. So I'm going to do that. Now on the HTML, we're not going to have very much at all because this is going to be our first foray into this. I'm going to go ahead and do a div div class container and within that I'm going to put in let's see I'll do a grid item times 36 so that's a uh, an Emmet add in shortcut there so basically I'm going to have 36 divs not that I had to do that many um, maybe I should have done you know like with a desktop layout I want to do 12 grid items I could have gone more but this will be enough to kind of visualize what's going on and I think that's all I'm going to do with my HTML at this moment. So on the body of the page, I've got a div container, and then I've got um, a bunch of consistent divs in there. So let's go ahead and see what we've got going on. So I'm going to jump over to the CSS. And so that I can easily visualize this, I've got my browser open over here on the left. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, dot .container border 4 pixels solid, and I'll just go ahead and put in yellow green so we can see this all right and it's all shrunk up on itself so let me just go ahead and do a min height of 100 VHS viewport heights and I can see all right that's filled up the space pretty nicely It'd be better if I could visualize all those grid items though so let's see dot grid item and I'm gonna for the short term at least I'm gonna give them a min width of 200 pixels and a min height if I can spell properly min height of 200 pixels and I'll give them the border 4 pixels solid of uh, sandy brown. So now we can really see and they are doing what block elements should do. They're divs, they're block elements. Regardless of the width they are taking up as much width as possible, 100% width, but of course the height was nice because otherwise they would have shrunk up on, on themselves. So okay I can visualize what's going on there. So now the magic's going to start to take place when we go back to our parent container. Now, if we were just doing something like uh, display flex, instantly these things would start to go into a row orientation. So all 36 of those divs are now in a row orientation, and that was just with display flex, which is pretty sweet. But instead of display flex, I'm going to put in a display grid. Now that puts them back into their vertical orientation because in addition to display grid, I also need to kind of indicate how do I want these rows and columns set up. I'm going to add a couple of new declarations down here. Let's see, so I'm going to do grid template columns, put a little pin in that for a moment, and also grid template rows. Now what I put in here could vary, but I'm going to go super simple with this video. And I'm going to put in a series of 1FRs. So six fractional units. All right, I'm pretty satisfied with that. And with the rows, I think I'm going to just do the same thing. I'll just type it in. Two, three, four, five, and six. Perfect. So now we can see something amazing has happened over here on my page. This is basically six columns and six rows. And the 1FR stands for one fractional unit. Therefore, my each column is taking up one-sixth of the available space or one fraction of the six columns. And same thing for the rows, one fractional space or one-sixth of the available height. Now, it is a little screwy looking because, of course, I still have these min widths and min heights on there. So let me get rid of that min width and min height. That was just there as a temporary problem. And now we can see my grid is filling the space up very, very nicely. Don't forget my main container's height was set with a min height of 100 viewport heights, so that's why it's filling up the height the way it is. Um, and of course, my container's a block element. It's taking up the width uh, naturally at 
So everything's filled up pretty nicely. Now to get some space in between these grids, I can also do that here with the container and I can put in a column gap. There's column gap right in there. And I'll just do something like uh, eight pixels and we'll see that uh, take place right away. And then of course I can also put in a row gap of eight pixels and we'll see that um, take place right away. So that's how I'm going to kind of start with my grid experimentation. And once you start trying out some new properties related to grid, then just start to experiment with other alternatives. For instance, you might be wondering, gee, okay, I understand this one FR. What happens if I go to my second column and change that one to a two? And um, let's see if we get a refresh. There we go. Now my second column is taking up two fractional units of the available width. So it's taking up twice as much space as the others. And very similar, I could go down to my grid template rows and I will pick on the third one here, the third, which is currently one fraction. I'm gonna change that over to three fractions and we can see what that impact is there. So that's gonna be the start of my CSS grid experiment. And then later on, we can see, well, gee, how can we have one grid item take over multiple shares of space and stuff like that? But pretty easy to start uh, to get started with this. So take care.